All right, here he is, the legendary Corey Glover from Living Color and now uh, Sonic Universe. Corey, what's going on, man? How are you, Logan? How's it going? Good, man. I got to tell you, we will, of course, uh, get to the reason that you're here, which is the uh, your brand new band, Sonic Universe. But first, I, I got to tell you how bad I fucked up and shit to bed. I went to see Extreme uh, maybe a month and a half ago, <laughs> and uh, I got there late, and I totally missed uh, Living Color, which was, uh, which was a real bummer. I've never seen you guys, and uh, I guess that's what I get for being late to the show. Well, it's you missed an experience. Where we? Where we? Did you come see us? Uh, Northfield, Ohio. Ah, yeah. And I think that tour uh, mm-hmm. it just finished uh, about a week and a half or so ago. Is that right? About a week ago, yeah. Just about a week ago, yeah. It just ended in uh, Nashville. You've uh, you've said before that uh, the the lineup, Extreme and Living Color, is really a, sort of a, a match made in heaven, and I, I got to agree. And, and both bands at this point in in twenty twenty four really seem to be uh, on a bit of an upswing at the moment. So, and I know that tour was doing great business. A lot of the shows were sold out. I mean, it really is uh, yeah. is uh, fantastic. We had a great time. You know, they were very uh, guys in Extreme were very very accommodating. You know, it was it was a lot of fun to do. We saw a bunch of really great places. We went all over the United States. Um, we're going to do some more with them probably at the toward the end of the fall of this year. Um, and it's a good time. You know, it's really amazing to me uh, about that tour in particular is, is how both bands, uh, in particular you and, and uh, extreme singer Gary Sharon, how great you guys sound after all these years. And, uh, you know, especially, of course, considering Living Color uh, predates Extreme by a few years, I believe. Yeah. And I remember when, when the, uh, the tour got announced, I watched a video of Living Color on Howard Stern a few years back doing Call to Personality. And just, I mean, right. being, I was just completely blown away by uh, how good your voice still sounds. And then watching footage uh, from from these last uh, this last tour because of course I missed it. Uh, I mean, yes. my God, it's just uh, it's just incredible, man. I mean, your voice is is still phenomenal, and I'm I'm sure you get that all the time, but uh, it, it really is true. Well, uh, you know, if you if you do it if you're doing it because you like it, I guess you'll sound okay. Yeah. I guess so. And, you know, I was uh, the other interesting thing uh, before we get into Sonic Universe, I was reading an interview with you where you said that, you know, Living Color is not the kind of band to just have uh, one set list and, and play it every single night. Uh, and, you know, you, right. you're, you're able to change it up. And do you think that that's maybe one of the upsides uh, to being a band that has, I, I guess, what you might call a, a little bit more of a uh, cult following, no pun intended, of course, but. Uh, you know, as as opposed to a, a wider mainstream uh, following. I mean, yes, you got to play Call to Personality every night, but the rest of your set can really be whatever you feel like doing because your fans, uh, they're, they're true fans, are so hardcore, and they know a majority of the Living Color catalog, so you can have that freedom as opposed to going out there and having to play the same, you know, eight, ten songs or whatever every single night. Right. Well, the thing of it is, is like, you know, we just celebrated an anniversary um, this is like the 25th year, 26th year of Stain. So 30th year of Stain, I believe. And so we've been playing a lot of Stain heavy uh, records, songs from that from that record. So there is, you know, Leave It Alone and Ignorance is Bliss and that kind of stuff. So we are that, that kind of heavy plus we like to throw in a, a cover or two to make just to make just for our own sort of uh, just to keep ourselves on our toes. Well, and even the covers, you guys, because uh, a lot of bands, you know, that play covers, they just they kind of have uh, the one one or two songs that they gravitate towards. But uh, looking at some of your guys' set list uh, on set list FM, I mean, even that you guys change up from time to time. Yeah, from time to time, we, you know, we run run the gamut of either when we first started out on this tour in the summer of last year, we were leaning heavily on, uh, nothing compares to you. Uh, we did a Zeppelin tune. Um, now I think we're doing last, this last tour we were, we had kick out the jams, the MC five tune as a part of our repertoire as well. Uh, nothing compares to you. Did you guys, uh, were you guys focusing on that because of, uh, Sinead O'Connor passing away last year? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Basically because of Sinead, 
passing earlier that year. Yeah. So this new band, Sonic Universe, uh, which also features Mike Orlando uh, from Adrenaline Mob, is a brand new single, Higher, mm-hmm. from the upcoming <laughs> debut album, It Is What It Is, uh, which comes out on May 10th. And I got to say, these first two singles, uh, Higher and, and the first one, I Am, uh, they really are fantastic, and they have a lot of actual substance. And a lot of times when you see these uh, super groups or, you know, quote-unquote members of bands come right. out, they, they can kind of feel uh, half-assed a lot of the time, uh, but not this. The vocals right. are phenomenal. Mike Orlando's guitar playing is insane. I mean, th- this is, uh, it, it's really the, the, the real deal. Yeah, I mean, it was it was our intention of making a, an album, a full album from beginning to end. And, you know, with as much talent as you have, when you have Mike Orlando as a guitar player, and not just as a guitar player, but as sort of like a song arranger and a songwriter, it it made you had to make something. You had to make something good. There was no way you couldn't make something good without with somebody like him around. How did this project come together, and and how far back does your uh, relationship with with Mike go? Is this something that you guys formed together, or is this something uh, that was formed and then he got brought in uh, later on? No, this was this was something we I met Mike on the Shiprock cruise. Um, we were both stowaways and I was personally, I was completely blown away by Mike and what he does and how he plays and just, it was the most incredible thing I'd ever seen in my life. And we struck up a friendship and we thought, you know, let's get together and do something. Let's, let's make something happen. Let's make, let, let's see what, what, what occurs. And, you know, we both live in New York. I, uh, I live just outside of New York City, and um, we came, I went to his house and to his studio, Sonic Stomp, which is an amazing studio, and he does amazing work out of there. And we came up with a bunch of stuff, and it's, it just kept getting better, kept getting better and better and better. And every time we would get together, it's like this sounds really, really good. This sounds sounds phenomenal. We should do something with this. And fortunately for for us. We got we got a hold of somebody, and Ear Music was very was very gracious enough to give us a deal. Well, it's really great to see uh, Mike still active because for those who don't know or, or remember, uh, obviously he was an Adrenaline Mob, and, and that band uh, was really sort of plagued by tragedy. At, at one point, they had uh, Twisted Sister Ooh. drummer AJ Perro uh, in the band, and then he tragically passed away while the band was on the road back in 2015. Uh, and then, of mm-hmm. course, they were involved in a uh, vehicle accident in Florida, uh, which I, I think seriously injured Mike and, and a couple of the other guys in the band. But it also mm-hmm. tragically uh, it killed their their bass player, and I think their their tour manager eventually passed away a few weeks or so mm-hmm. after the accident. So it's good to see him sort of uh, bounce back from all of that and uh, being active again with with Sonic Universe. Absolutely, and, and he's playing better than ever, as far as I'm concerned. Are there any plans to take this out on the road? Oh, absolutely. Um, obviously, I, my schedule is being filled up by Living Color stuff. We're doing a bunch of festivals and stuff in, in May, and we're going, we're playing, basically playing straight through till about October. So probably this this winter, we'll probably go out and do some stuff. When you're a, a member of, of a bigger band and then you have a side project such as something like this, Sonic Universe, or your metal band, Disciples of Verity, do you find it to be uh, maybe a little bit of a grind in that uh, you're going out, you're probably playing smaller rooms, probably not traveling uh, quite as luxuriously uh, in a bus or something as you would with Living Color, the hospitality is probably not quite as grand, uh, so to speak, as you may be used to. Or do you do you not mind? Do you have a good yeah. time going out on some of these smaller slash lower budget types of tours with these newer projects? Well, these the, you know, you had to when even when you know, Living Color had to work to where we are. Sure. So I'm I'm not afraid of working to get to make to make something work to make something successful. So to go out and do something is not a is not a big issue for me. And speaking of uh, Disciples of Verity, your your metal band, what's going on uh, with that? Is there anything new coming out uh, on, on that uh, on that front right now, or is that going to be something later on? Well, supposedly it's it's co- they, they just it's coming out in the next couple of months. The the, the next record is going to happen, 
we'll see how that goes. I know you've you've also said uh, in, in other interviews that Living Color is working on new stuff as well. Do you think 2024 uh, will be the year that we get new uh, Living Color music? Maybe not 2024, but definitely 2025 we'll have something for you. And I keep I say that and then it doesn't happen. But I'm I'm <laughs> trying to make guarantees that, that this would definitely we go in the studio next month to to work on some new stuff and hopefully we'll get it out by 2025. There's also a I, 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 I could be lying. I could be lying to you and it could be 20. So who knows? Well, I'm sure uh, some, something like Blabbermouth will just uh, take the headline that, uh, you know, I, I promise new music in 2025. So, <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, there's also a documentary uh, on Living Color that's in the works as well, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, w. Kamau Bell is, is trying to direct a, a documentary on the band, and we'll see how that works itself out. We're still in, we're still in, in the, uh, in in the beginning stages of that but we'll see how it works out so nothing has, has been shot or anything yet nothing yet no yeah a, a few more things uh before i let you run you said uh before uh that the key to keeping living color together after all these years while also trying to maintain a, a friendship and, and a positive relationship with the other guys is to love them of course but also knowing when to tell them to uh, i think your quote was go to hell uh, and walk away and doing it on a regular basis. Is that mentality yes. still employed today? I can imagine, you know, early on when the band is coming up, still making a name, maybe there's some young egos or whatever. But fast forward to now, where obviously it's it's a well-established uh, legacy act at this point. Everyone's in their 50s and 60s, older and more mature. Do you guys still find ways right. to irk each other? Or is it more of a, oh, more, more of, is, is there still dysfunction? Or is it more just of a, of a love fest these days? And it's, 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 I can I can safely say that I know I, it, there's a, there's a distinct point when you tell somebody to go fuck off. It's, <laughs> it, you have to find that you have to find that place every now and then, and and, and say uh, uh, I can't do this right now. I'm I, I, I'm going to go someplace else and make that work for me, and y'all can go kick rocks. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's. It, it, it's and you know, I I, I don't say that because I, I I'm I dislike these people. I love them to death, but I love them enough to be honest with them. And you know, you get to a saturation point. I tell you this much: we were on the road just now for about two months with with Extreme. We were, went out. We started like at the end of January, and we finished last week a week ago literally a week ago so um it's like two months that's the longest i think we've ever been out even back in the day when in the band's heyday i don't think we were out that we've never been out that long so oh. we had to really sort of you get to a point where it's just too there's a there's a lot and you need to i need to to be in my bunker in the back lounge and not talk to anybody until it's time to play because you know it's it's, a, it's an emotional drain it really can be when you you know when when you have a song like call to personality that's so massive uh and it's and it's mm. and it's the song that obviously everybody associates with the band are you tired of that song are you sick of, of oh my god fuck this song i gotta play no. it or do you look at it as a blessing like if it wasn't for this song i really might not have a, a career doing this type of thing today I'd be, if i didn't if it weren't for that song i'd be working for ups how about that <laughs> Seriously, um if if it weren't for, weren't for that song and and the evergreen nature of that song because it seems like every so often it pops up in very interesting places you know, um, with the with with CM Punk or the video games, Guitar Hero, or within the Guitar Hero, or even in within the political discourse where people use it, and quote it in on newscasts. You know, it it has a weird sort of continuing life that I that I am very happy and very grateful that it exists. Well, you know, and, and, and going back to, to doing this for a living, it's funny, I, I, I was reading an article with you last night, and um, you were talking about going to see, uh, I think it was James Brown when you were like nine or ten years old at the uh, Apollo in New York, mm -hmm. 
And, you know, you're mm-hmm. like, he's running around and, and screaming all this stuff. And I'm just like, what the fuck? I didn't get it. And now I'm doing it for a living. Right. Now I get it. Now I get it. <laughs> took, took, me, took me over 40 years to, to get it right, to figure out what the hell it was that he was doing. And, you know, that, that incident in going to see James Brown at the Apollo Theater, um, I, I didn't know, I didn't realize until very recently just how blessed I was to have been able to see him. You know, it's not that it, there was a point when it's it, James Brown was everywhere, but obviously he's not around anymore. So, but to see him play at his heyday in like in the, in the mid seventies and the band is on fire, you know, and he is literally smoking hot, literally smoking hot. And, and, I wish I could be as proficient as he is on a bad day. Well, you know, with the the uh, the high level of of musicianship that goes into Living Color, mm-hmm. you know, obviously one of the the hot button issues these days is uh, backing tracks. I am curious uh, uh, on on your thoughts of bands that use uh, tracks these days. I I don't. I don't fault anybody for doing whatever they need to do to get, get the message across, you know, cause they're, they're communicating. It's, you know, use whatever means you can to communicate whatever it is that you want to say. If you're trying to, if, if you have a particular emotional place that you're in, that you want to convey, make sure that you have whatever it takes to do that. But live in color. I mean, you guys, we, uh, we, you guys are hundred percent live. We use stand- yeah, we're 100 live. We we do use samples for certain things, but sure, we don't. You know, the the guitars are 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 the guitars. Those are all the guitars. That the bass is what it is. Drums are what they are. There's nothing. It, it, it may be enhancements, but I don't think we ever use backing tracks or anything like that for those. So for our live shows. Well, one other thing that I, I wanted to uh, bring up before we we start wrapping this up is uh, recently. Uh, you made some headlines after releasing a, a statement that sort of piggybacked off of comments that the great Lenny Kravitz made in an interview. Uh, oh, and, it, and, you know, we don't need to get too uh, political here. But, you know, basically right. he said that he had uh, more or less always been overlooked and sort of uh, ignored uh, from black organizations in the entertainment industry. And then you put out a statement oh. following that up where you basically said, hey, it's true. It's it's happened to, to live in color, too. And then noting that, that yeah. you guys have made yourselves available uh, to organizations uh, such as, as B, uh, BET or whatever, but the response from them and, and others was always, you know, something along the lines of, uh, oh, it's, it's not the right fit, or something like that. Why do you think, yeah. why do you think that is? Um, I, I, th- there seems to be a, 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 an axiom that rock music or the, the 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 flavor of music that we actually play it is not within in certain and not not in their wheelhouse something like BET let's say it's not they're not in their wheelhouse when in fact we are and what's very interesting to me is how you know at some point established black artists in some way shape or form find themselves in wanting to switch genres in some way and they didn't they make a foray into rock music or they make a foray into some other type of music you know my the clearest example is uh is beyonce who has the number one sort of country single out in the country now uh which i think is amazing i think it's beautiful but i I, i've heard rumors that she now wants to make a rock record and it's like just wanted to and to that i say i can give you my number if you want it you know sure. I, um we'd love to work with you um so i don't have i think the reason why certain certain places don't look at us in in those terms is because they don't think that we belong to them when it's very hard to to, dif- to differentiate between <laughs> who i belong to and who i don't belong to it's very clear what i belong to and what i belong to is music well, and I think too, you know, what, what's, what's also interesting and I, and I, you, you kind of alluded to this in your statement is that, you know, obviously, uh, 
rock uh, in, in general is derived from the blues, uh, which which of course is is uh, I mean it's it's something that it's 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 a black form of music from uh, you know a, right. a hundred years ago, and and uh, nobody uh, seen a lot of people fail to acknowledge that I I think. Yeah, well, you know, that's that 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 was the point I was trying to make in that post that I made uh, was that you know it's bad enough that you know there's certain places that we are excluded from simply because we're black. So it, to be other black folks sim- excluding us simply because we happen to be playing rock music, in and of itself, is a problem that needs to be dealt with. Well, as uh, as we wrap this up, what else do you have going on this year? Obviously, like you mentioned, there's quite a few uh, Living Color tour dates, uh, both in the U.S. and Europe throughout the year. And I was also reading somewhere that uh, there may be a, a potential, at some point down the road, a potential acoustic record from you uh, and maybe even a, a new solo album at some point. At some point, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, um, my writing partner on my solo stuff is a guy named Mike Ciro, um, another amazing guitar player. Um, and we are, we, we've tentatively made plans to make another record, probably an acoustic record first and then do a solo record. Well, uh, check out the brand new single higher from Sonic universe. Make sure you pick up the full album. It is what it is when it drops on May 10th and you can check out living color on tour all throughout the year. I think their tour dates are livingcolor.com. Uh, Corey, thank you so much for coming on, man. Really, uh, really appreciate it. And, and hopefully I'll have the chance to see living color someday. (laughs) <laughs> yes, yeah, sometime one day you you'll actually come to a living color show. Yes, <laughs> we'll see you there. Yeah, thank you, man. Appreciate it. <laughs>